Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports. We're going to talk some baseball. We're going to talk a little football this morning. I'm going to look and see who's in our chat room. Lenny, great job. You know, Lenny was talking about the Braves just a few moments ago, and I'm sure a lot of you guys watched that game last night. Uh, it was, uh, well... Great pitching. I mean, uh, Bueller and Max Fried just really looked incredible. Uh, one one tie going into the late innings, and then Blake Trining comes in to pitch. But you know, wasn't it, the great thing about that game last night to me was there were actually people who were breathing, not the cardboard cutout types in the stands watching the game, and no major tragedy. So, you know, let's give more people to the games, right? Uh, it just, I don't know. Uh, it just seemed to me more like baseball. And to me, it was an incredible, incredible outing. First game all year since spring training stopped dead on its feet in early March that fans have been in a game. And he had about 11,000 there last night, and they got a treat. Good morning, DK Loosh. Good morning, Donkey Oaky, Doug Boyle, Lenny Malpal, Star Dog. I love that one. Guest Ruben, Augustine, and Wanda in our chat room. If you are watching on Facebook and I say chat room, we have a chat room on Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network where we have, well, it's a great group of people, knowledgeable fans podcasters, so you may want to look in there and look at some questions that are asked. I try to do that during the show. Uh, not only do I do that, I hope you guys will follow on Facebook. Send me some questions this morning. We're going to talk a little more about the Braves and the Dodgers. And, you know, the thing I love about Atlanta, the age factor. You know, there's so many young kids on that Braves team and you look at their lineup last night and, and Acuna leading off Freeman batted second Azuna has Marcel Azuna not been just a godsend to the Braves this year if you're a Braves fan and I know a lot of you come on and, and give me grief because I don't give the Braves enough kudos well I'm going to give them kudos this morning but if you're a Braves fan, you've got to love Marcel Ozuna. He signed a one-year contract. And if you're the Braves, don't you go out and sign him to a longer-term deal now that he's performed at such a high level all season long. I mean, it's not like he's just heating up in the playoffs. He was hot all regular season. And Darno at catcher. You know, the Mets, who can screw up uh, <laughs> whatever, they had Darno and they cut him. I mean, cut the guy, right? The Braves sign him. Not only is Darno hitting cleanup, he's hitting cleanup well. I would say, I would say he's the top offensive catcher. I know there's a kid in Philadelphia. I got it. But pure batting ability, there's not a better offensive player if he plays 162 games based on what he did this year. And then you've got Albies, who's back from injury, going two for five. Dansby Swanson. Did you notice, though, early in the game, Adam Duvall is at the plate, swinging the bat, and he aggravated that oblique. And I just believe he is gone for the playoffs. You don't recover from an oblique injury in a day or two. And it was obvious from him wincing, obvious from swinging the bat, a lot of torque in that powerful swing. Duvall is out. The Braves won't get the opportunity to bring someone up because of it being an injury. But the play of the game was in the ninth inning when ninth place hitter Austin Riley, who had struck out twice and had left three men on base during the game and had not looked good doing any of that, he's up against Blake Trinan and he homers, putting the Braves ahead 2-1, to one. They go on to score more than that. They had five. They had four more. Ozzie Albies two-run homer, and that was a bomb, let me tell you. Uh, 
the Braves have a lot of weapons, and Kershaw going today for the Dodgers. Is it a must-win game? I, I don't think a game two is ever a, a must-win game. I think, though, game two is a, I really need a win, Dodgers. The Dodgers, at some point, as long as the Braves are leading the series, the Braves are not the favorite. They're, as you would say, playing with house money. The pressure's not on the Braves. The pressure's on the Los Angeles Dodgers. They steamroll the regular season. They added Mookie Betts in the offseason. They've got arguably the best starting staff, arguably the best bullpen, arguably the best lineup, arguably the best team. But as we know, and I can go back and look at teams throughout history. You know, I've done this before. I love talking about the 88 Dodgers. The 88 Dodgers in the 88 playoffs were probably the third or fourth best team. Maybe four. The Mets on paper were better. The A's were better on paper. The Red Sox may have been better. But the Dodgers steamrolled the playoffs because they were playing with house money and they had players who got hot. Kirk Gibson was hot. Oral Hershiser was hot. Well, look at the Braves last night. Max Freed, six innings, nine strikeouts. Only one earned run. That bullpen, Atlanta, 7th, 8th, and ninth. Martin, Smith, Melanson, three perfect innings, no hits, no walks. And you're not talking about chopped liver on that Dodgers side of the till. Now, look, the Dodger lineup last night loaded with bats. Betts goes 0 for 4. Seeger 1 for 4. Turner 1 for 4. Muncie 0 for. Will Smith 0 for. Bellinger, Ofer, Pollock, one hit. Kiki, one hit. It was a home run. Chris Taylor, Ofer. The Dodgers as a team go four for 31. Not too good. Bueller, five innings. Look, one thing we know about Walker Bueller, he's got a lot of talent, but he's not going to pitch very deep. He's not going to pitch deep in any game. He went five innings last night, gave up one earned run, three hits, struck out seven. Good morning, Amy Elmore Cannon, and we will chop on talking about your Atlanta Braves this morning. But when you got into that bullpen, that Dodger bullpen that was supposed to be so great, look at the ninth inning. Four hits, four earned runs. I've already talked about the blast that was given to them by... Austin Riley and and Ozzy Albies. But this Braves lineup is fast, it's young, it's energized. Look at them on the side, watch them out of the dugout. They look like a high school team. It's like when I was playing baseball in school. I mean, these kids are out on the field, right outside the dugout, waving their towels, jumping up and down. Whereas the Dodgers are going through it methodically like it's a day at the office. The Braves look like they're having fun. Remember, this game of baseball, was it created for old dudes like me or was it created for young guys? It was created for young guys. That's why they slide and dive and do all those fun things. The Braves are having fun. The Braves had fun in the last series. And don't put it past the Braves beating the Dodgers. Today, again, game two. Not a must win for the L.A., but it would sure be nice if you're a Dodger supporter or a Dodger follower, if Kershaw could come out and pitch like Clayton Kershaw and even this series. Look, the Braves, Lenny touched on it at the 9 o'clock show. I mean, it was great analysis. The Braves aren't giving up any runs to anybody. That entire pitching staff is on fire right now. The bullpen, the starting staff, and and today, you know, it's another day. Yeah, I got it. But it's another day. You're going to get rookie Brian Anderson today against Kershaw at 6.05. Anderson has been incredible. I picked him up on my fantasy team the moment he came up. And he was lights out. In fact, 
He cost, I think it cost me a fantasy championship. If you remember Atlanta Braves fans, near the end of the season, he was supposed to pitch on a Sunday. They moved his start to a Monday. And because I lost that Sunday start, I missed out on what he would have given me in strikeouts and innings. Can't blame him. Just say, when you count on a rookie, and, and, and you know, this is where some rookies are rookies, and some rookies are special. And Anderson is a special rookie. And that is going to be a whale of a ball game at 6 o'clock tonight when Kershaw and Anderson both take the mounds for their respective teams. And if Atlanta goes up two to nothing on the Dodgers, game three is a must win for LA. You cannot go down three to nothing. It's only been done once. Once. And I don't think you want to go down that path if you're the Dodgers this year. Amy says they're fun to watch and the seven, eight, nine spots can hurt. Look, that's what killed it last night. You're exactly right, Amy. If Austin Riley doesn't hit the two, the home run, it was almost like as soon as Riley hit that home run, the can has, had been opened. And, and the, the players reacted. It was like a tension buster. You know, it's like you're in... You need that person to tell that one joke or to say that one thing or to get that one hit or to, in this case, get that big home run. And Riley did it in the most clutch of ways. Now, do I think Riley is the best player on the team? No. He's in the nine-hole hitting. He may move some to the outfield now that had that injury last night of Duvall, but Atlanta is resilient. Let's look at that Astro Ray situation for just a moment. Four to two yesterday. Now Tampa leads that series two games to none. Manny Margot, big home run early in that game. He hit a two run homer with two out in the first. Three to nothing off McCullers right to start with. Game over. Game over. And today, and look, Tampa only got four hits. Okay, Zanino homers. Do you remember Steve Yeager with the Dodgers? Yeager used to hit about 210, 220 during the regular season, but you, you let those Dodgers make the playoffs and Yeager becomes a hitter. Zanino's the same way. He's our modern-day Steve Yeager. Bats ninth, homered again. Margot, three-run homer. And what about my boy, Arizarina? Two for four again. I mean, now, those are the only hits. Tampa got four hits all game long. But when you score four hits, excuse me, four runs on the four hits... And look what they did to Houston. Houston got 10 hits. If other than Bregman, every starter got at least one hit. But they scattered them. The Ray bullpen and starters scattered them. Now McCullers was not helped by Altuve's throwing error in the first inning because that led to three unearned runs on the Margo home run. If you look at McCullers' line, it's pretty good. Seven innings, four hits, one earned run, no walks, 11 strikeouts, but he gave up two homers, and the three-run homer that was unearned was his water loop. The Rays pitching, again, just... Timely pitching, Morton goes five shutout innings, and then the bullpen comes in. Fairbanks gives up a run, pitches two innings, strikes out three. One of those was a home.